The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Nodulator Pro, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Bernard Tobin back on the Soybean School, joined now by Dale Cowan from Agris Cooperative. Thank you, sir, for taking the time. Well, thanks for having me in. Awesome. Always great to get you in and tell us about some of the agronomic things you're up to. And uh, I want to go back to uh, June. And wow, you, way back. Yeah, way back. Uh, you and I met at, uh, at a field. Yeah. Um, you were doing some strip-till and soybeans, something we haven't seen a lot of. Twin rows in a 10-inch strip or band on your brother's farm, Larry, yeah. and uh, working with your nephew, Chris. Chris. Yeah. And uh, pretty interesting experience. Um, I guess before we get to the results, talk about what you're trying to achieve with strip till here in Ontario. <clears throat> well, with strip till, I, I think so. The, the concept was been proven on the corn, at least on that farm, with some previous years' demonstrations. So the investment was made in the strip till, and what you're trying to do is drive out some of the equipment cost ownership. You don't need a lot of the tillage equipment anymore. Uh, get into a, a, a situation where we can ban fertilizer down in the root zone instead of broadcasting it and incorporating in the falls. So we save that tillage pass. So we have a nice bare strip of soil in the spring that's going to warm up, and we got two thirds of the ground undisturbed for erosion control yep. and uh, residue management. So yep. it, uh, those are the things we're trying to accomplish, and I think we've done that yep. on the corn and soybeans was uh, was a fun yep. thing to try. The next thing, labor savings, all those things. Chris talked a lot about that in our previous uh, video. Let's uh, let's talk about what we learned. Uh, how let's start with the yield. How'd it go? Well, hey, yield uh, straight up, 73 bushel the acre. Mm -hmm. uh, Planted May 7th, and I think one of the salient points is that some of these larger farmers have the ability now to plant corn and soybeans simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So in my brother's case, one can be on the corn planter and the other can be on the on the soybean planter. And uh, you know, you get your corn in on May 7th, you get your beans in on May 7th too. So I think that's a lot of the yield benefit. Uh, whether we can compare it directly to strip till, we didn't do any side by side comparisons. But as I said, the investment was made for corn, so the bonus is, can we do it on soybeans? Right. And the drill set up for twin rows down the middle mm -hmm. of corn rows, no till anyway. Right. So this was just a, an evolution, a next step is, can we put it in the strip? What about uh, application, uh, you know, planting, anything you learned here? Uh, how about those gangs? Are they set right? Well, the gang, so that's the way the planter works is the front gang and the back gang uh, behind. And, and of course, you can only get them as close as they yeah. can get them at seven and a half inches. There's no room to, on the frame to do anything else. So what we learned is, uh, one gang runs very nicely in the strip, and the other one sometimes wanders just a little bit into the mm -hmm. unworked strip. So we're planting one little deep and one perhaps a little random and a little shallow. So I think going ahead next year, we're going to set that depth a little more carefully mm -hmm. and a little more down pressure on the one that may has a tendency not to be in the strip all the time yep. Yep. and, and uh, do that. Maybe so. What about a larger strip, maybe a little wider? Well, if you had to do it all over again, uh, of course, there's no adjustment on the strip till. So if you had to do it all over again, 12-inch strip might be uh, something you want to look at. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, like I said, I think the initial thing was for corn, and yep. this was just, just the bonus on beans. So we're going to continue on with it, but there's one problem this yep. year. Uh, this year was the problem. Th this year is uh, it started raining in October and yep. never stopped. And one thing we learned, you don't make strips in the yep. mud. Yep. So there are no corn stalks for next year yep. ready for soybeans with strip-till. So yep. we're back to uh, planting down the middle of that corn row with, with the same drill again. Right. And uh, you'll be back in the business, I'm assuming, next fall. Uh, Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Um, bottom line here, um, I think Chris talked about again, you know, the, what's the net return, net benefit um, with 73 bushels and, uh, you know, less labor, less manpower, less passes in the field, it all adds up. Yeah, everybody's going to have different numbers, but I'm here in between 35 and $40 an acre saving just on equipment ownership cost right. and fuel savings, manpower. And like I said, if you can take your existing manpower of a two-man team on a farm and one can plant corn, one can plant soybeans in a, in a system that's uh, set up and ready for planting yeah. and not having to do a lot of spring tillage, you can get a lot done in a day. Awesome. Dale, thank you so much. Um, uh, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll continue this saga. We'll uh, get back in the field but probably with you this fall and see how those strips look. We're never done. We're going to keep going. Good stuff. Thanks. Thank you.